So um, <clears throat> thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here once again. Um, my personal branding presentation, Be Noticed, is part of my career management series that I've been doing for some time, I think since 2010 when I joined the professional development office when we were all together. Um, career management is a passion of mine. I think um, I've been doing career management since before I started college. Uh, I was, I, I've been always very mindful of the different things that you can do for yourselves to start positioning yourself in a certain way so that you can continue to advance your career. So, we had a new person coming in. Where are you? I just want to make sure you have a copy of the presentation. Okay. So for many of you who are thinking, so what is personal branding, right? This is a concept that has been around for about 10 to 15 years. And it all, all started because in the big corporations in the profit world, those guys who make all the money um, and hold half of the wealth in the world, I just read that um, in the um, New York Times, um, their executives uh, were, look, were they, they were in fast track careers. So the people who were in charge of professional development, they wanted them to have a good personal brand with the employees. Um, they wanted to make sure that they were representing the company um, in a very good and positive way. So this is where the concept of professional branding came about. However, like two or three years after that, the employees in those companies started to catch up and saying, hey, wait a minute, personal branding, what are these guys doing? It's not only for them, it's also for me. So that's where this concept really took off. I haven't distributed those, but that's okay. Okay, have a seat. So that's where the concept really took off. And basically, to simplify what it is, is the process to present ourselves to others. It's about good, you know, good first impressions, second impressions, third impressions. It's about if I didn't have a very good impression with you the first time, I know that I can create those opportunities so that when I have that second impression, third, fourth, fifth, I'm going to change my, my brand around. And I'm going to make sure that it's going to be positive from then on. It is the process of finding what makes you different from others. Okay? We all have similarities. Carolyn mentioned we all work for higher education. But if you start looking deep and deep and deep, deeper and deeper and deeper, you will find that even though we all work in human, dis in human resources, we all do different things. Dana is right there, right? Um, Dana and I have similar points in what we do because we are both career managers. We are, we've been certified as career uh, management professionals. But the way that we, you know, um, develop that process with the employees is completely different. So that's what makes us different. So the process of personal branding is that you find those one or two things that you can really hone in, make you different from somebody else, from everyone else, and those are the things that you're going to start branding. That you're going to start, that's the communication that you're going to start taking out there to the other people that you're having encounters with. Your brand. Your brand needs to be a unique promise of value. Again, it's all that concept of differentiation. When you think about luxury cars, what brands do you think about? There you go. What else? Mercedes. Tesla. Hey, that's my car. That's what I'm saving for. Someday when I'm 65. You'll see me driving a Tesla um, because that's one of my goals. Yes, right? Um, so those are, the, you know, when you think about jewelry, very expensive one, what do you think about? Tiffany. There you go. Yay! Someday I'll be able to walk in and say, I want all of it, but I cannot afford it. Bye. Um, so those are the, when you think about brands, those are the things that you're thinking about. Now, some of those brands right now have negative connotations. When you think about unhealthy food, what do you think about? Burger. <laughs> there you go, right? So right now, those companies are embarking in this adventure and in this journey to say, 
you know, maybe 10 years ago, we were the go-to place for all of these people to come in and have a good time and bring their kids. But now parents and everybody else is thinking, wait a minute, my sugar intake, my fat intake, I cannot be going to McDonald's on a, on a, on a regular basis because I, because I might be sick. Right, and they were really, really in bad shape when that movie, um, Super Size Me, came out. You remember that movie? It's a fun movie. It's very eye-opening. And then since then, we've had a series of other movies where all of these fast food companies have been dinged, basically. So that's part of our person. I mean, that that's the concept that we want to bring in. They have a concept of differentiation. When you think about BMW, when you think about Lexus, when you think about Mercedes, they have points, they have things that come to mind. So that's exactly what you want to do with your personal brand. There are things that for some of you that I've met, that I have worked with, when you think about Nana Gaviria, there are certain things that you think about. And I'm hoping that those are the right things because that's what I've been branding since I you know, came to ACC. One of them is I am a bilingual individual, right? You can tell that because I have an accent, but I'm not going to hide from it, OK? I'm just going to work with it, and I'm proud of it, and that's part of my personal brand. I'm from Colombia. Caroline mentioned it. Whenever I have a chance during the interactions that we have, I know my country has many negative connotations. I'm not going to hide from that either, right? Because it's part of my history. But I'm, I'm certainly going to try to let you know, hey, we have positive things as well, me being one of them, right? <laughs> now, um, because of that and because where I am in the United States right now, um, you know, the, the fact that we have all of these issues with immigration, that's important for me as well. So that is something else that becomes part of who I am that it becomes part of, of how different I am maybe from another Hispanic person who's, well, okay, yeah, immigration, that's not something that I'm very interested in. So that's how you start building your brand. It has to be authentic. It has to be genuine. Because if it is something, you know, if I want to be part of the administrators, then I need to know everything about, I don't know, universal, let's say, um, not universal, but, um, you know, French literature, right? You don't like to read. You don't know French. You don't even like the French people, which is fine, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but then you're forcing yourself to be something that you're not. Fine is, I mean, it is fine if you say, you know what, let me take an interest in this and let me try to learn it. But if you try to force that in into who you are and what you're trying to brand when you are with those um, administrators, it's not going to work because they're going to understand, they're going to catch very easy that you're not being authentic, that you're not being genuine. Um, I've seen it happen with some people um, when they try to force something uh, when they are presenting them themselves. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't work. We catch it and then what, what that does is it, it turns people away. So it has to be authentic, it has to be genuine. It's always better to say, you know what, that is something that doesn't interest me. You know, I, you cannot be everything and anything. And again, you need to find those one or two things that are going to help you differentiate from everyone else. Because that's what the part that I like about the personal branding development process. And that is, you're not going to hone in on your negative side. You're going to hone in on your strength. And you're going to find that, you know, those one or two strengths that are really going to make you um, that, are gonna, gonna, that are really going to help you, you know, grow your brand and, and make you look better and, and really advance your career. Your personal brand needs to support your personal goals. And you need to think about what your personal goals are. Your personal goals and your professional goals go together. Usually when I, I'm just going to write, do you have a marker? Yes. It's dry erase, yes. When I do my career management classes and I'm talking to people and we, we talk about goals, I usually draw a little line like this and I tell them, just think about your, your, when you're, just think about your goals and where you are and where you would like to be um, as a line like this and then you divide it up every three years. For me, three years is not short, is not, 
such short length of time or such long length of time, because when I think about five years from now, many things can happen in five years. You know, things can happen in three years, but the turnaround for that, if you think about it, is faster, right? So I, I tell people, let's look at when you were 16, right? And then we do increments of three years, 16, 19, 21, so on and so forth. Don't ask me to do the math. <laughs> Until you are maybe 65, right? Your retirement age, let's say 65, 66. And then you look personal, and then you look at professional. So in each and every one of those years, up until now, that's the easiest part. You think in terms of where were you personally at 16 and professionally. So professionally might have been, I was lazy. I didn't want to work. I was at home. Wasn't even, I didn't even know what I wanted to do. And then the progression goes from there. Up until the time, I'm 42. So let's say this is my 42 year right here. Up until this time, it's easy. It's actually fun to do it, right? And it's, it's, it boosts yourself up because you're thinking, wow, since I was 16 until now, look at all the things that I have been able to accomplish professionally and personally. And it really makes you think, OK, now that I'm 42, where do I want to go from here? And then you do your plan, right? Based on that plan, you can start thinking, OK, if by the time I'm 55, I want to be vice president of human resources, what do I have to do to get there? And by the way, that might or might not be part of my plan, OK? <laughs> not saying that I want to do that, because I may change. Um, but if I want to be that, what do I have to do between now and then to get there? What have I done in my past life to get here? OK? Now, when I talk to people and when I work with them, sometimes, you know, after they do this exercise, they come to me and they have this plan, all, you know, like, this is what I'm going to do. And then when I'm 45, and then when I'm 48, and then when I'm 51, and then blah, blah, blah. And personally, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Then you go, OK, so you know what happens with plants, right? What happened? Change. Change. Hey, exactly. So what I tell them is keep in mind and be mindful that personal influences your professional life. Professional life influences your, per your personal life. So they are both connected. That's where the support your personal goals comes in. They, your, your personal goals need to support your brand. <laughs> Because when you go out there and start interacting with people and you're having those career mindful conversations, they may ask you, and most, I mean, they, they may ask you, and, and I think they will, what are your goals? What do you want to do? Why are you here? Why do you want to change positions? Why are you doing the Leadership Academy? You know? So those, these needs to, your brand needs to support your personal goals. Because at the end, it's about you and what you're doing to advance your career and to advance yourself, and in turn, obviously, to advance your family so that all of you can move forward. Right? Let me give you an example. Caroline mentioned I used to live in Cleveland. Um, this is nothing. This in Cleveland would have been ice and snow and digging yourself out of the highway, something like that. So um, I was in Cleveland. You know, I was in, in the pathway to become director of undergraduate admissions at Cleveland State University. I was being groomed to do that. I was the assistant director. I was very excited. It's a state university. You know, I felt like I'm going to make it. And then from there, I'm going to do this. And I was already talking to the people at the university so that I could pursue my PhD in student affairs. I mean, that was it. I had all of this experience in human resources, but I pretty much said, this is the path that I'm <coughs> going to take. Because my husband was working for a pharmaceutical company, and he loves it, and we're going to be here. I'm not happy about the weather, but we'll be fine. What happened? In 30 days, we went on vacation. 
And 30 days later, when we came back, I thought he was kind of joking when he said, I'm going to look for another job because I hate the weather here. And we came back from Florida, beautiful Florida, to Cleveland. <laughs> it was snowy, it was cold. We had a freak storm. You know, we were digging out the cars. 30 days later, he called me and he said, hey, I have a job with Dell. <laughs> I was like, sorry, what? I was getting ready to go to a national conference to do a presentation about an initiative that we were doing in CSU in Cleveland State. And I was like, what? What are you doing? What are you? What? I mean, my first thing was great. I mean, they don't have snow there, right? He goes, no, it's Texas. I'm like, awesome, that's fine, great. And then the next thing that I said was, why are you doing this to me? I didn't take into, I mean, when you said we might move, I thought <coughs> in a year, six months, two years, maybe never, right? So I said, I didn't know that this position was going to come about so fast. And he goes, well, you know, they called, they want me, salary is great, it's Texas, he's from Mexico, we're closer to Mexico, your sister is in Houston. I said, okay, fine. Let's go. Right? So we moved. So when we moved here, and I'm, I'm looking at the jobs and, and different paths that, I'm, that, I, that I can pursue, of course, naturally, I said, I'm going to go ahead and do my student services path. Right? What did I have to do? I had to take a step back um, and say, the, the jobs that I want to right now, they're not going to give them to me. They don't know me. And, and I'm, I'm a very relational person, so they don't know me. So I need to take a step back and see where I'm going from here, right? And that, I was looking at my personal goals thinking, what am I going to do? So then the opportunity to be part of, you know, to, to be a recruiter in the Human Resources Office came about. And I went back and I thought, hmm, at some point when I started working in higher education, I always wanted to work in the administration. I always wanted to feel what it feels like to be part of the administration and make the decisions, right? Because I was on the receiving end sometimes when I was working at the university and at the community college. So I said, everything that I know about recruitment, I can apply it. And because that was my, my master's was in human resources, basically, I can bring it and, and do it in the human resources world here at ACC. When I landed there, again, I'm evaluating my personal goals. I'm new to the city, I'm new to the institution, so I'm trying to establish relationships again. I'm branding, I'm making sure that I'm, 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 I'm known for the things that I want to be known for. I'm looking for opportunities to participate, right? So I get here, and it, all of these changes, all of it. Why? Because I, I really liked working in human resources. I rediscovered that passion. I was like, yay! This is what I've been wanting to do for so many years. So your brand and what you do and you plan needs to be flexible. There's a book by Sheryl Sandberg called Lean In, and some of you may have read it, seen it, I don't know. And I really like that book. And there's a line in that book that says that your career, you shouldn't look at it as a ladder. You should look at it as a jungle gym. Because you're going to have ups and downs. It's going to be fun. <laughs> you're going to have to maybe fight your way through with other kids. You're going to find friends in the playground. But at the end, that's what it is. It's a journey. You're going around, right? Because if you look at it as a career ladder, like you're always going to go up, you're going to be stuck, and you're not going to be flexible enough to be able to adapt and change with whatever Thro life throws at you and this plan is going to change. Okay? So going back to this, your brand, then it has to be, you need to find your unique promise of value. It has to be authentic, right? And you, it needs to support your personal goals. So that's your clue number one on how to build your brand. You need to start thinking about your personal goal. If you don't have any, this is a good time to start thinking about them. The process that I propose, it's very easy. It's one, two, three, we're done. First you extract, second you express, third you exude, the middle is you, we're done, we move on. It'll take you about three weeks, I'm kidding. That is not the case. Because that's what I hear from people. So this takes about like a week, right? Uh-huh. 
A week for what? <laughs> Hold on. So when you extract, you need to look at yourself. You need to look within and start thinking in terms of who are you, right? What are your values, your passions, your goals, your vision or purpose? And for so many people, and even for me, because at the end I'm going to tell you that you need to reevaluate that brand very often, and I probably do it every couple years or so, you realize that some of your passions change and they shift. Your, I'm sorry, your goals change and they shift. So that's why this needs to be flexible. Some things are going to stay the same, right? What do you want to be known for? So Marcus, what would you like to be known for? Um, for being a, um, a positive contributor to the uh, administration <coughs> and the processes here at the college. There you go. Very articulate, Marcus. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, one of the things that I want to be known for at ACC is that I am one of the people who are really looking and, and moving the agenda for cultural competence so that it becomes ingrained in everything that we do at ACC. Yeah, he does too. He works with me. Um, so that, that's one of my goals. And that has become part of my personal brand. And it's, it's, it's now so, nat it comes so natural to me that whenever I can and wherever I go, inevitably I say something about cultural competence, right? And people have started to say, hey, you work in cultural competence, what is the college doing for these? Or they just send me articles or videos or, or you know, with, with what happened last year, people would send me questions, people that I don't even know around the, the, the institution. Hey, since you're the comp cultural competence lady, what do you think about what happened in New York? And I'm like, huh, what is going on here, right? So that's, that's part of, of who I am. That's also part of my personal brand. But I have worked hard to make sure that that is the case, right? You need to assess your image, your current image. And that is not, I'm going to get a makeover. It's not that. It might be part of it. But when I say assess your current image, I brought with me some materials that are going to help you do that. Because what you need to do is you need to start going to your friends, family, you know, colleagues, your boss, your um, networking people that you've worked with, and ask them questions about yourself, right? That's how you start assessing how other people are looking at you. <coughs> Four. Let me just... Thank you. Hey. Do you have enough? Oh, thank you. Oh, you didn't get one of those. We do have actual enough. Okay, thank you. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You're such a gentleman, Max. And then you guys. So when you look at the types of questions, is to start, you know, this one that is just one handout. You can start asking questions to yourself like, what are you most passionate about? What do you care deeply about? And then start asking other people, what are those top three or four personal attributes that things that define how you make things happen? Right? And ask other people and start assessing that. And of course, document those answers, right? And have what I consider to be those very honest, crucial conversations with your family, your friends, your colleagues, that people that you network with, you know, maybe your boss. Sometimes talking to our boss about that, you need 
that certain courage that some of us may not have, which is fine. But try to ask as many people as you can. Have that um, very candid conversation. In my family, they, they are very honest. They, don't, they actually take advantage of the opportunity to tell me, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I see, I see them, which is about once a year, believe me, it's an opportunity for me and for them to assess this. So in a way, they keep me in check. The other one that keeps me in check all the time is my husband. Hey. <laughs> What did I hear? The wife? Okay, but that is good because the personal brand needs to become part of who you are. It needs to come natural to you. Remember, because it's genuine and authentic, you're just gonna do it. What you're trying to find out is what makes me different? What are those two strengths that I can really hone in? And I'm gonna bring that out to everyone so that everybody goes, wow, I really wanna work with Kendra. Come on, right? So, and then you need to define a target audience because even though you can use this personal brand everywhere you go, personally or professionally, my target initially was professional, right? Going back to those personal goals. What can I do to advance my career? My target is gonna be these people. And then you define that target you'll find that as, become, as, as these become more natural to you, your target is gonna be pretty much everyone, every interaction that you have, right? Let me give you an example. Um, my husband used to be the president of the National Society of Hispanic MBAs chapter here at Austin. And he also was the president of the chapter back in Cleveland. So in Cleveland, I had many of my Colombian friends involved that I knew had an MBA. Um, he actually created the chapter and everything, so I was like, you are gonna sign up whether you like it or not, because we need to support this, it's important. We didn't have that many Latino associations in Cleveland, so come on guys, we have to do it. And then at some point, they all started calling me the first lady, because he was the president, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, woo, I'm the first lady. So when we moved here to Austin, I knew some of the people coming in um, they also were like, oh yeah, Tim is the president now, so you're gonna be the first lady. And I, to be honest, you know, it was funny at some point, but then after that, I was like, I really don't like that. Because even though I'm not part of the board that you guys have, I'm a volunteer. And I'm not a volunteer because my husband is doing this. I'm a volunteer because I genuinely care about what the National Society of Hispanic MBAs is trying to do, even though I'm not an MBA. But just be clear about that, right? I'm just, I, they're trying to do things at the high school level, at the you know, graduate school level, at the undergraduate level that I care about. And it's a natural, you know, it's, it's a natural feel for me because I work in higher ed. So when I came here and one of the guys who was working with them said, oh, you're the first lady, I said, no, I'm not. You know, I just happen to be the wife, but I wanna be recognized this way. And it took me a while, but the last year that he was president, they actually said, okay, we're looking for somebody. They have a signature event where they bring all of these speakers together. And, and they said, we're looking for somebody who can help us coordinate all that. And I said, you know what? This is exactly the opportunity that I'm looking for, for me with them to be recognized in a different way and for them to stop joking about the, ah, oh, here comes the fair lady. So I didn't, you know. It's funny, but that's not me, right? So I just said, you know, I'll do it. It was a lot of work. There were some days that I was ready to go to Dallas where the main office is and like strangle the CEO of the National Society of Hispanic MBAs because he wasn't making my life easy. Um, but we made it, you know, the speakers show up, they had a good event and I was very happy. So after that, I realized and I noticed that they were not saying, oh, this is Artemio's wife, or hey, Nana, the first lady. They were saying, hey, Nana was the co-chair of this particular event this year, even so that after that, I've been collaborating with them ever since. 
even though my husband is no longer part of the you know, Hispanic Society of MBAs here in, in Texas. I mean, he's still part of the national, but not associated with the, with the chapter, right? So I, I started to define my target audience to say, this has to go beyond to what I do at work. This is going to transcend to, so, to some other areas of my life because it's important for me to be perceived in a certain way. And that all of those ways are consistent. It's not, oh my God, I wish you would see Nana when she's out of work. Jesus. It's an entirely different person. Okay? So keep that in mind. So that's what you're doing when you're extracting. <coughs> and this takes some time. Take your time. Enjoy this process. Right? You're going to find your strength. You're going to be surprised because some people may say things about you that you go, huh, I didn't know that. Give me an example. And then do not feel down or sad or depressed or anything like that if someone says, well, you know, you are really bad at, uh, you know, or they go down that negative path. It's fine. We're not perfect. We all know that. And it's good that you're aware of things that you can improve on, but don't concentrate on those yes yet. You can do that later. Right now, what you're looking at is, what am I good for? What are those things that are going to differentiate me from everyone else that I can really bring it to the forefront? Express. This is where you've done your homework, and then you start branding with everyone. You start bringing that, you know, improved persona. You start, you know, continuing building those relationships, building new relationship, um, changing the image may be not so positive that you had the first or second time with that particular person, right? So it's about visibility and credibility. Again, it has to be authentic. You need to start communicating your brand to your target audience. And this is where I can help you and where I come in. You need to develop your career management toolkit. And that is from having an elevator pitch every time you're in the elevator at HBC that takes forever, right? And then you happen to be with the president and he walks in and I've seen some of our employees that they just go, oh. <laughs> and I go, what? Relax. Good morning. So, you know, it's, it's been that way because the other day I walked into the elevator, good morning, Dr. Rhodes, good morning. Um, Nana, how are you? Fine, thank you. And then out of, I said, how, so how was your week? And oh, it was fine. And out of the blue, he goes, so what's going on with wellness? And I'm looking at it. I'm like, it's the third floor. You're living on the fifth floor. I'm living on the sixth floor. I really have to be in my office. I'm not walking with you to your office. So you need to come up with that response that, you know, it's going to be like, oh, it's going great. We have a few challenges, la, 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 fifth floor, and then you leave. What are you working on right now? What are you doing right now? Right? You go to the board meeting. There's a reception before. You have a chance to talk to the board members before. What are you going to say? You need to be ready for those moments. You need to have your two, three minute elevator speech. When you go to networking events, what do you do? Hi. Hello. What's up? And then, oh, I know Polly. Hi, Polly. And then you spend two hours of the night with Polly and a drink. <laughs> you don't leave her side. When you have an excellent opportunity to walk around, meet other people, but you need to be ready to have the elevator speech. So I have some information for you that is going to help you that. And from there, you are building your brand. That's where it starts. Again, you need to make sure that you're enjoying it and that you believe in it. So what's part of your career toolkit? Have a business card, right? And that business card, for some people, it might be two different ones. One, that is your ACC business card. Mm. You know, sometimes when I go to networking events, I don't want to bring that because then I get these odd emails. Hi, I'm looking for a faculty member who can come into my association and do this particular presentation for six hours for free. Find a person. You're like, what? That's not exactly what I do. Or do you think that ACC would be interested in giving us money? 
no, we are looking for money. You know, so you get these odd requests <laughs> like that. So sometimes I don't use my business card from ACC. I use my personal card. It has my name. It has my personal email address. I never use my cell phone, my email address, and, and you know, Maybe I, I sometimes I, I have in those I have different models, but in one of those I have you know I am interested in cultural competence, human resources, you know things like that. Those are great because when you go to networking events, sometimes you meet people, and then when you are trying to connect further with that person, you just write things on the back of the card like hey you know this person, and then you you go back to that, right? Have your resume, cover letter, updated references. This is basic. I do classes about resumes, cover letters, interviewing skills, all of that. Even if you don't, you say, I don't really want to go to the class. I just want to talk to you. Send me an email, call me. We can talk. You don't necessarily have to go to the class. It's fine. I'll help you with your resume. I've helped some of you with your interviewing skills. So it's fine. I'm available because this is important, right? Your social media profiles. Be very aware of the type of things that you are uploading. There's a new term coined by the Webster Dictionary that is called oversharing, mm -hmm. right? So we need to be mindful of that because it used to be that you know the, the private sector was the one looking at your profile and doing your Google search and all that, like who is this person? And I want to find them, you know. But now more people in the in the public sector is catching up to that. When I talk to other recruiters, that's what they're saying. You know, we're checking, if we can, what sort of <coughs> profiles they have. We're looking for them online. So Google yourself. <coughs> wow, that's not narcissistic. Google yourself. It's funny what you come up with. Yes. Do you have any tips for Googling yourself if you have the most common white guy name ever? <laughs> <laughs> I've tried it, but I've got to be very specific, like location and everything. That's the only way that you have to do it. You have to be very specific. For me, it's easy. There's probably one idea I'm going to be in the entire state of Texas. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> Maybe three in the nation. Um, but yeah, you have to. Exactly. Exactly. So you have to be very specific. But look yourself. I would be concerned. If you find in the first three pages a lot of negative things about yourself, we need to do something about it, OK? And I would be also concerned if in the first three pages you don't even exist, <laughs> OK? It's like, because even though I don't want you to be oversharing out there, it is important that you have some sort of presence, OK? Now. If the presence that you have is videos of you on YouTube getting drunk and trashing a place, we need to get rid of that. So you need to be very mindful of your social media presence. I really like LinkedIn. And to be honest with you, I am not a social media person. Uh, again, I'm very, I'm very, I tend to be very private. I am um, very concerned about oversharing. Um, so Facebook for me is more, I want to find out about what you're doing, <laughs> but I don't want you to find out about what am I doing. <laughs> exactly, you know. I mean, my, 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 my husband is in charge of the social media part of the operation, right? He's in charge of the marketing of the household, not me. Um, so you need to be mindful of that. I know many cases, in fact, when you read the, the sometimes in, in the SHRM journals, they have all of these articles about tell your employees, or this person wasn't hired because of these, or this person is suing this particular company because they used their profile and they found out that she likes to drink every single weekend and trash a bar the other day. <laughs> You know, and, and things like that. So you need to be mindful of that. It has to, I mean, I think you should have a clean image, post positive things. I have far more friends in LinkedIn that I communicate with, friends, uh, than Facebook. For Facebook, I'm very selective. Um, I've actually cleaned up my list so many times. Uh, but in LinkedIn, you know, you can follow groups, and then you find out information. Um, you get 
connections from other people telling you, hey, you know, there's a job ad that I thought you might be, you might have a good profile for. If you're interested here, you can click. Um, you know, I found an article. Um, I have received referrals from people here in Austin uh, that say, you know, I know this person, she's part of my LinkedIn, they are looking for somebody who works in, in a community college because they want to learn more about that and what the environment is. Can you talk to them? And then you're increasing your network. For me, LinkedIn is more of a, sort of like an eight to five, more professional type of thing. And I tend to like those interactions more um, than in Facebook, you know, because I have friends there that I haven't talked to in a long time from Colombia. Right, that not even when I go to Colombia, I see them. So it's, it's harder for me to do that. So LinkedIn for me is better. But it's up to you. Yes? I have a question. I have kind of the opposite problem with Richard in that I'm highly sociable because apparently, like, I have people myself, I'm the only person that has my name. And so I don't know if you guys have any experience with that. Like, do you have to Absolutely, yes. If it works for you, if you're going to follow up with them, mm -hmm. if that is something, you know, having a Twitter account is something that comes naturally to you, then do it. But if you're doing it to force it, like, I need to have a Twitter account because my social media presence is terrible. So I'm going to have a Twitter. Don't force it like that. Because either you're going to leave it at some point and just don't touch it ever again, or you're going to start coming across as, she's really pushing for this Twitter thing. What's up with that? Right? And you're not going to enjoy the process. Um, if you're, I mean, I, I prob you and I probably have the same issue. You know, I Ana Gaviria, and you can find things from Cuyahoga Community College when I had short hair and I looked like a boy, right? Um, but then I, I'm always checking those, not always, but often I check those things in case I find something negative that then I have to go to one of my IT friends and say, how can we move this to page 37 of the Google search? or make it disappear or can it somewhere because it's, it's not very positive. Not that I haven't found anything yet, so keep my fingers crossed. Um, so, so keep that in mind. Your email address. I, I really don't like it when people apply for jobs and they use the email address at ACC. That's a no-no. You should have your own personal email address. Even if it is an internal position that you're applying for, you need to have your own email address. An email address that is professional. It's not pinkladypants <laughs> at <laughs> yahoo.com. <laughs> when I was the recruiter, I found so many emails like that. Like hot lady mama. <laughs> Go out with me hunk. Really? Really. really. So if you want to have your go out with me on my hunk at yahoo.com email address, go ahead and have it. But don't use it for this, right? In fact, I would reevaluate and reassess that particular email address and ask, to my, and ask and talk to my friends and family, what do you think about this, <laughs> right? So have something, I mean, if you don't want to divulge a lot of information, have something that is, is neutral, you know, letters, numbers. And it's also for your own safety and security. Mine is so exciting. Is my personal email is my name and the initial of my last name. <laughs> Duh, right? But that's fine. That works for me. So keep that in mind. Other things that you may have, video resumes. Just be mindful of the types of video resumes that you are sending out there. If you <laughs> go to YouTube and, and you know, do a search for video resumes, some of them are great. Um, three, five minutes, you say what you have to say, you're done. Maybe you showcase um, things that you've done in the past. But some others are just awful. I mean, you see people dancing, like they're in the park, and then the dog is barking behind them. And, it's just awful. So if you're going to do something like that, make sure that you, you ask your friends and family for help. Hire a professional, you know? 
Um, if you have a blog or website, many of my um, mentors for personal branding and the people that I read recommend that if you can, buy your domain name in the, in the web. My, one of the, the guys that I communicate with regularly, he goes, you need to buy ideanagaviria.com. I'm like, I'm not going to buy it because I don't want to spend my money in that. Leave me alone. But that's one thing that he says all the time. Just buy it. You may never use it, but buy it. You have it, it's yours. Nobody else can use it. Right? But that's something that you may want to consider. At some point, I entertained the idea of having a blog. No, don't have the time, the patience to do that. So, you know, that's something else. And then so many of you may have portfolios because you work in media, because you do writings, because you do paintings, because you work with art, because you um, are actors. When I was the recruiter, I would get, when we were hiring for a drama professor, I was getting all of these videos and pictures of, of potential professors and their profiles and, you know, um, five, ten, and I've done these things, and I was in this movie, so of course, I'm like, really? Where? So I'm looking for them. <laughs> so you know, these are part of your career management tool. And these are things that are going to help you brand every time you have communication with someone. Because either you're looking at that person face to face, or you are communicating via a social media platform, or you're talking to them via email, or you're talking to them on the phone. Your voicemail in your cell phone, you know, is also important, right? When I was a recruiter again, hi, you know, <coughs> I would get very good voice messages. Hi, you have reached Ideana Gaviria, please call me Nana, I'm not able to answer the phone, blah, blah, blah. But I would also get, hello, what's up? My name is Carlos, and these, and he's like, what, what? Or music in the background, or, you know, no. You are doing, you know, you're just trying to get a message. Even be very mindful of this when you're looking for a job because it's very important. The last part is exude. And the thing that you're asking yourself all the time is do you leave a mark in everything that you do? Are you imprinting that authenticity, uh, 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 you know, that authenticity in everything that you do? Right? You need, you're branding all the time. And believe me, after a while, if you decide to go through this process, it's going to become a natural part of who you are. You're just going to be doing it all the time. Right? And you're going to be very aware and very mindful, very mindful when you go, eh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, and, uh, or, hmm, that is something that I should probably explore because it's going to strengthen this particular skill that I'm really honing in. Right? Look at your environment. That's also part of who you are. It's a reflection of who you are. If you go to my office, you see things that will tell you that I'm interested in cultural competence. That for me, the issue about immigration is very important. There's a sticker on my door that says, I'm still counting on, um, it, it has a, a, an 11 painted on it and said, what about the other 11 million? And that talks about the 11, 11 millions of immigrants that are in the United States, right? And I have other things. I mean, you, you very quickly noticed that I'm from Colombia and that my husband is Mexican. I actually have a piñata in my office. It's this big, but it's a piñata, and it has candy in it. <laughs> I had somebody walking in and saying, oh, that is so cute. Are you from Mexico? I said, no, I'm from Colombia. My husband is from Mexico. My niece gave me this um, for my birthday. So it's there. And there are other things that you will notice that family is important to me, that professional development is important to me because I have articles all over the place, you know, that you can pick out. Can I make a copy? Sure, no problem, right? So that's part of also who I am as a person. Some of you have been to my office. You've seen my stuff, right? Yes, OK. Increase your career development chances. Networking is very important. And at first, if you've never done it, it's going to be awkward. Because again, you're going to show up at a particular event, and then you recognize Polly. You're going to go and latch on to Polly, like, never going to let you go. 
right? But then you need to start stepping out of that comfort zone. I can probably tell you, when I did the Leadership Academy a few years ago, um, when I walked in into that first meeting, to that first class, I knew Christina because she was my coordinator. And I probably knew two more people. I didn't know anybody else. And on top of everything else, I missed the first class because I was traveling. So I walked into the other class, the second class, everybody already knows each other, and I'm like, oh, and I'm panicking, right? And my, my, my first thing was, okay, I know you too, I'm gonna go to you because you're my colleagues in human resources. But then I stopped myself and I said, no, that's why you're here. This is your opportunity to go sit at that table and talk to those guys over there and get to know them, right? So those first times that you're doing networking, maybe that elevator speech, you practiced it at home like 100 times. You come out and you're like, uh, you know, and your brain is going crazy. You don't know what to say. But then it becomes more natural. And then you start talking. Big part of networking is to give back. Because you may, you may meet people at an event. Oh, hi, how are you? What's up? OK, we meet, we exchange cards. But you decide, you know what, that might be, or that is a relationship that I want to keep going. It's not that you have to stalk the person, like, we're friends, we met, yay, yay. You know, you may establish a connection in LinkedIn, for example. That's a very good way to get to know each other. And from time to time, to keep that networking alive and your network alive, you may find an article, a job. You may have a question. Send it to the person. That's giving back. That's saying, hey, Angela, I found this article about this particular topic that we talked about. I met you six months ago at dot, 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 and I thought that this might be interesting to you. So then I go ahead and I send it to you, and I keep that network alive. And you're giving back, right? And then you'll see the results in return. Sometimes I go to places and I see people and they're like, hey, you sent me this article like a year ago about, and I'm terrible with names. I'm going to confess that. I really have to work at it. So like I have to go and, and in my mind, that little place in my mind and repeat the names like five times until they get there because I'm not good at that. And when I was going through personal branding, I realized it because before, you know, I was just like, hmm, what's your name again? And I would do that maybe three times in an evening. <laughs> and I, you know, until finally I realized, you know, this, this is not going to work. Right? This is something that, yeah, you know, it's, it's a weakness of mine, but I can work on it. But it wasn't something that it was going to prevent me from, you know, why am I good at? I'm good at this and I'm good at this. Let me work on that. But I'm aware that I'm bad with names. So what can I do to work on that? But it's not, I'm so bad with names. I'm so bad with names. Oh my God. <coughs> no. I just work at it. And it's always happening. I have to repeat the names like four times in my head until they stick. Right? So networking and giving back is very important. Even here, that is something that I really liked about the Leadership Academy, how I still um, keep in touch with the members of the Leadership Academy. You know, we see each other, we recognize each other, we talk about it. When, whenever they need my help, they give it to me whenever I can provide them with help. That's what I do. So that, that's a great opportunity. I mean, you may not see the other 14 of you all the time. And you don't, may, may not get to work together with the other 14 all the time. But keep that network alive. You know, from time to time, hey, Dana, I found this compensation study from Finland, 300 pages, that I find interesting. <laughs> Here. Whenever you have trouble sleeping, there you go. <laughs> and by the way, it's in three different languages. You know, something like that. But keep that network alive. Personal branding assessments. These are tools that you can use online to, that will help you do that <coughs> assessment. Through 360 Reach Personal Branding, they have a tool that is free. But if you pay a little, you have access to the extended tool that will actually 
provide you with a very comprehensive report of all the answers that you will get from the people that you send the assessment to. So yes, it's going to require some economical investment if you want to. Jobhunt.org, they also have a personal branding tool that is for free that you can use. Feel free to Google it, you know, and you are going to find a lot of them. But these two I have found, they're very good and they do work. Again, it is very important that you are continuously measuring and assessing your brand. Remember that you need to set up your goals, but they need to be flexible. And your brand needs to be flexible because things are going to change. Right? You know? Always look for ways to maximize your strength. And be aware of what your weaknesses are, and whenever you have an opportunity to work on them, do so. But for those of you who need like a very exact mathematical formula for these, I would have spent 80% of my time working on my strengths and 20% of my time working on my weaknesses. Because that's where you're, again, your brand. You're coming out with a very positive image of yourself. And, and, and you find, and I, I've talked to so many people, that as you work on your strengths, believe it or not, you're also working on your weaknesses. So, you know, going back to my example of I'm terrible with names, if I would have spent 80% of my time working with Lumosity to make sure that my brain works correctly so that I can remember all the names of the people that I meet every single day, instead of, you know what, I'm going to spend more time really, you know, increasing my strengths as a presenter, as a manager, you know, something else. At some point, the whole name thing is going to catch up with me. I know. It has caught up with me a little bit. I'm getting better. So do not overthink things. So this is the time for questions. I, I have some additional materials that I brought for you.